Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us, whether it be in person in here in the hall or whether you're joining us online. Now, if you were with us last week, you would have heard of our brother Sean Parry talking about a saying or a phrase which was declared, which was shouted out when the Archbishop of Canterbury placed that crown on King Charles III's head during the coronation last week. And that phrase was, God save the King. And Sean was able to explain to us the origins of that phrase. And in everyday life, we use phrases which are common. And sometimes these phrases are different from each geographical location that you go to. And in Wales, we, we often have a, a saying that um, when you're just about to meet a friend or, or a colleague and they ring you up and they ask, how far away are you? We say in Wales, I'll be there now in a minute. And what we actually mean by that is, we'll be there in a few minutes, but we're really close. And I don't know if you've ever looked at these sayings, and in the Bible, the majority of these common sayings that we have find their origins in the Bible. And I'm going to take some time this afternoon just to go through a few. Now, the first one is that which I found, which is in Leviticus 16. A person who takes the blame for another's mistake, we call them a scapegoat. And you find that in Leviticus 16. Or if somebody has the same opinions as you or the same thoughts as you, you say, a man or a woman after my own heart. And we find that in 1 Samuel 13. And of course, the last one is if somebody has done a selfish act to help somebody at a time of need, we say that they are a good Samaritan. And we find that saying or that event in the Gospel of Luke. Now, my aim this afternoon is to just to look at one important saying, probably the most important saying that we will find in the Bible. And that is written by the Apostle Paul, who wrote a number of the, uh, the books of the New Testament. And that we can find in our Bibles in 1 Timothy 1, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. And I'll read this verse twice. So it's 1 Timothy 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. I'll read it again. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Now I'm going to take some time this afternoon to just to break this verse down and to understand the meaning of this verse. So straight away, Paul starts off with saying, it is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying. Now, what does he mean by the word faithful? Well, faithful means worthy of credit. And why is what about Paul is going to say worthy of credit? It's because it is the word of God. It is this saying has come from God. And as it has come from God... It cannot be a lie, it cannot be mistaken, it is 100% the truth. And Paul goes on to say that this saying is worthy of all acceptance. Let's have a look at that. He says that it is worthy that all, that includes you, me, every single person in this building, every single person in this world should accept this saying. Nobody is excluded and nobody should ignore it. Everyone should accept this saying. But what is it that is a faithful saying and worthy that everybody should accept it? Here's the punchline. 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So why is he written Christ Jesus? Why is not not written Jesus Christ? Well, you see, Paul has got an important lesson for us this afternoon. He is saying that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, which is Christ, and man, the Lord Jesus Christ, came into this world to save sinners. You see, Paul is telling us that before Bethlehem, the Lord Jesus Christ existed. You see, he even existed before even this world existed. And that he came into the world to save sinners. You see, he came with a purpose. And that purpose was to save sinners. Now, who are these sinners? They are you and me. They are every single person in this world. You see, Paul also tells us in the book of Romans that all have sinned. You see, there's a three-letter word again, all. That again, as I mentioned a few moments ago, all includes you, me, every single person in this world. We are all sinners before God. But how and why are we a sinner? Well, we are a sinner because we are from the line of Adam. And because Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, we all have this condition of sin. We are born with this condition of sin. And sin is real. Sin is not something that only certain people have. Sin is not something that we can ignore and forget about. Sin is real and every single person in this world has this condition of sin. So why do we need to be saved from our sins? Well, you see, the world will tell you that at the end of life's journey, and you're placed six feet under, that that is it. That is the end of life. But can I just tell you this afternoon, that is the biggest lie of the world in this time that we have today. In the fact that at the end of life's journey, there are two destinations. There is the eternal damnation, which is a place called hell, and hell is a real place. If you read the New Testament, you will find many warnings about hell. And there is heaven, where you can have eternal life. And those who have dealt with that condition of sin in their lives, those that have come to that realisation that before standing before God, who is holy, who is righteous, that we have failed, that we as human beings, we have not met the standards set out by God. We are sinners. And those people who accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour will have an eternal home in heaven. But those who reject the Lord Jesus, those who continue to live in their sins and just put their sins to one side and to continue to live and to love the things of this world, they will enter into a lost eternity. And the Lord Jesus Christ came to save you and me. Now you may be sitting there this afternoon and thinking to yourselves, how? How did the Lord Jesus, how did Jesus Christ save me? Well, you see, the Lord Jesus, he came into this world, not to come into this world to be in opposition to the Roman government. The Romans were in power at the time, and they were in power over Jerusalem and Israel. He did not come to be in opposition to them. He did not come to be a celebrity of his day. But he came with a purpose, and that purpose 
was to go to the cross of Calvary to lay down his life and to pay the price of sin. You see, he didn't come to pay the price of his sin because if you looked at the life of the Lord Jesus, he was perfect and he was holy. You know, there was not a time where he, as a young child, would be disobedient to his parents, his earthly parents. There was not a time when those who caused him pain and anguish, did he retaliate? There was not a time in his life where he did any wrong, where he did any sin, because he was perfect. And because of this, it meant that he was the only one that could go to the cross of Calvary. He was the only one that could take your sin, could take my sin upon himself, and to pay the price. To stand and be judged for our sins. Every single thing that you have done from the moment you have been born to the moment that you will die, he took upon himself. You see, he did it so that we may be saved from the wrath of our sin, from the judgment of our sins. And why, you may be asking, why did he leave heaven and come down into this world to save us and to die upon a cross because he did it for the love that he has for each one of us you see the lord jesus christ he knows exactly all the things that you've done in your life he knows your very thoughts he even goes to the point where he knows the number of hairs on your head he knows all about you and knowing all about you he still went to that cross of Calvary and paid the price of every single thing that you have done which is against God's righteous standards. You see, he did it because he loves each one of us. And there at Calvary, the Lord Jesus Christ, on that cross, he endured the wrath of God, the judgment of sin, and there he gave up his last breath and entered into death and they took his body down from that cross and they placed it in a tomb. But on that third day, when his body was resting in that tomb, he rose again. And now he's alive forevermore. And those who come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour, those who put their trust in him as their saviour, can also have eternal life you see at the end of life's journey if you've come to know him as your savior you will enter into heaven you will enter into the very presence of the lord jesus christ but you may be sitting there this afternoon and saying to myself well how can i be saved what do i need to do to be saved you know, Paul got actually got asked this question by a jailer. He actually cried out, what must I do to be saved? And you know the answer Paul gave? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You see, Paul didn't say, give all your money to the church. He didn't say that. He didn't say, do all this good works and if you're good enough, you will get to heaven. He didn't say that. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You see, it's instant. There was no period of time. The moment you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour, you have an eternal home in heaven. And you know, as we preach the gospel, the message of good news. People also tell us that the Lord Jesus doesn't want to know me. I'm not good enough to go to heaven. What does he want to know? What does he want to do with me? But you know, when Paul said this verse, you can see on the screen there, he finished it with a, with a phrase right at the end. He said, of whom... I am chief. What does he mean by that? Well, Paul is saying, 
is that even though I've just told you a faithful saying which has eternal consequences, I am no better than you. In fact, I am worse than you because I am the chief of sinners. And why could Paul say that? Because if you were to read in the book of Acts, you will read that Paul, before he came to know the Lord Jesus, did some terrible, terrible things. But there was a moment in his life where he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a moment when he asked him to be his saviour and put his trust in him as his own saviour. You see, it does not matter what you've done in the past. It does not matter the bank, your bank balance value. God is not interested in any of those things. He's only interested in you. He only wants you to come to know him, the Lord Jesus Christ, as your own personal saviour. So as I draw to a close this afternoon, please do not forget the verse of Scripture that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You see, he's come to save you. So don't reject him. Accept him as your own personal saviour. Thank you for listening and thank you for joining us online. We'll just close with a, a time of prayer.